Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka Geek XX Chic, and we are here, guys. Bittersweet moment, the season finale of Titans. This is episode 13, which is called Nightwing. Uh, I don't think this, the title really surprises anyone after all the events that have happened, especially in the last episode. We saw that Dick now has the new suit. We didn't get to see it, but as I said in the review for the last one, I think, you know, I, I was pretty confident we were going to see it revealed in this episode, probably in some grandiose moment. We also had uh, some other things go down in the last episode as far as Donna and Dawn figuring out what happened to Gar, you know, what happened to Titan Tower basically while they were gone. They now know that, you know, that Gar's been altered by Cadmus and is no longer in his right mind. They know that, ha that it happened to Connor as well. We know that Corey is having some issues with her powers, which is a little bit scary, especially considering that they've got some pretty big things to deal with. So there's a lot going on, and, and I mean, as it should be. But as I said in the last episode, I don't know how confident I am that everything's going to be wrapped up in this episode, just because there is a lot going on between the Deathstroke, dealing with Deathstroke and getting Jericho out of Deathstroke. There's also, of course, as I said, trying to get Gar and Connor not only out of Cadmus, but trying to figure out how to reverse what happened. I noticed someone in my comments mentioned that Rachel's powers should be able to potentially fix Gar. And then, of course, as I said, there's still Corey and her powers potentially being a bit on the on the lam at the moment. Again, I think that's an emotional block, but also the fact that she needs to get home. And then there's still the fact that Hank is still somewhere out there drying out from being on a bender. So there's just a lot going on. So Without further ado, since we have a lot more to watch this time around, let's jump into this and we will chat about it after. Okay? Let's go. Who are these people? Of course we wouldn't expect you to make a bid. Oh, I saw that woman in the corner. She looking at kind of a something other than just defeating evil. Mm. You know what? Nice touch. Go away. Always leaving one more. Walter, one more thing. You're fired? Connor? I knew that was happening. I mean, you were way too cocky for somebody that got caught for sushi and kiteboarding. <laughs> what a juxtaposition. Murder and then fun and games. Please no clowns, please no clowns, please no clowns, please no clowns. Oh, why would you put... I hate Mercy so much. I hate her face so much. Gar will never forgive himself for this. More scrawled it on the wall of the cell, like caveman style. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. It's the style Neanderthals used to depict images in caveman. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Hunting. Break it down for them, Corey. But between you and Corey, we have plenty of firepower. At least to get um, to actually, that. yeah. Phase two. It's already begun. Well, we tried, guys. Let's have some snacks and just cry over some wine. If they're hurting innocent people, we need to be prepared. What the crap? Forgot about him for a minute. I'll draw the fire you guys put him with all these bucks. Well, that was fast. What was that? Who was that? Dick? Welcome back! I'll take both of those, thank you. Corey. Take care of her. I'll take care of you. This is my point. Okay. We gotta go anyway. Dude, you need to talk to Jericho. There you go. I know you're in there. I know you're alive. Don't say it. Oh, I'll say what I want, bitch. Say my name, say my name. Okay, here we go. This is what I want to see. Oh, best friends. <laughs> Hi. Hi. This is a party now. This is a party. Oh, baby. Oh, put your hands. No, no, no. New costume! You finally accepted your true family. I have. Bye! Jerk. Dick, you know, those glow sticks are only good if you use them. Come on. Now. Somebody. Go for the balls. 
He doesn't need no more kids. It's okay. It's okay. Take the patch off. Take the patch off. Jericho, if you're in there, you know what to do. Look oh, his poor hands. Did he go in to Rose? He's not dead. FYI, he heals a lot. Thank you, Dick, for finding me. Well, Sorry. you know, took me forever and I got arrested and I'm still wanted, but. We're together again. You were always a part of our family. Can someone just check and make sure Deathstroke's actually dead? If you want. The night's not quite over yet. There's this issue with Gar being a psychopath now. Help us arrive. Yeah, this is messy. <coughs> oh, why does my baby keep getting hurt? I'm not about this life. No, Gar, you don't deserve this. But we need you, Gar. Where were you? A couple weeks ago, then. Exactly. Why are you looking at me like that? Probably because you're dressed like a giant bird. There is that. And he's three. I don't know. He's Kryptonian. You're from Australia. Maybe we'll relate. Okay. <laughs> Actually, the other alien is probably better since she speaks Kryptonian, but okay. Since Corey's not on 100%, we'll be alright with this. You do realize he has lasers in his eyes, right? Ooh! Good job. Right? I'm doing just fine, clearly. Yeah, I was safe! In the safe zone! Oh. Is there a problem with your feet? Technical difficulties, Miss Graves. Ah! Bruce Wayne! Yes! I was like, when are you gonna help your kids out already? <laughs> the peer's bidding is closed for the day. Boo hoo! <laughs> In your face, bitch. What you get? Why are you mad at us? You knocked yourself out. So I'm gonna touch your part. Hand. How much do you like that hand? I mean, two hands is great. I know who you, really are. you can live with one. Even if you don't. Do this better. Only come back in the condition that they're not gonna keep leaving your ass and beating you up. Hey, what's up, naked no. boy? Thank you. I'd hug you, but you know, things might pop up. Is this a circle of darkness? Oh, wow, you're brave, Dick. I would not let that get all up in my mouth. Mm -mm. Can you walk faster, please, Dick? This is a super boy. And you're taking a casual stroll. There you go. You can punch harder. Come on. Boys like to hit things. Let's hit. Yeah, beautiful. Let's go. Where the shit are we? You're part of our family, Connor. Always Isn't that sweet? Unless you're Gar. Apologize for punching her in the face. Thank you. Maybe. Can you hurry up? Cadmus actually has kryptonite bullets and stuff. Let's talk about this whole brainwashing thing here, Merce. You're actually still in this truck. You deserve it. Shit. Yeah, you think? Take him down. Regular bullets? I'm sorry. Are you new? This is for Lex Luthor. Thank you. Damn it. Aw, I'm glad Corey got to do that. Actually, it made me really warm and fuzzy. Who's gonna clean up the amusement park? For real though. Bruce? I did this. No, mostly Gar. <laughs> Thank you, please don't kill us all. Yes, keep, keep it covered, it's children. about to say some of y'all have super speed and strength. I'm really confused. No, this is sad. I'm just saying Connor, between Connor and Donna, they could have knocked that thing into the water. 
Yeah. Gar is not gonna be okay for a while. Watch out. Space witch skin isn't made for the tropical sun. <laughs> I was about to say. I'll survive. She's from Australia, she'll be fine. Still no Jason, huh? Oh! Speak of. Okay, bye. Dude! Is this the real guy? I never know anymore. Bruce? Real Bruce? Don't feel the need to battle the past anymore. Thank the Lord. You were giving me the one thing neither of us ever had. Family. Yeah. Bruce is like, sure, we'll go with that. That sounds good. Hey, Gar. It's going, buddy? It's okay, it's not your fault, boo-boo. I left you here alone. I never should have done that. Facts. So that's on me. Mm, absolutely. You fought like hell to keep the Titans alive. Truth. Wow, Marie Kondo would be proud of those folding skills. Excuse me, we're broken up. That doesn't mean you can walk in without knocking. While I was away, I had a chance to think about some of the good that we did too. Oh, did you? In those five seconds you were sober? Hmm. Come on, Alva Rose. You did kill Deathstroke. And this Jericho in there somewhere. That's so weird. I'm not quite sure what you're referring to. Who the hell was that? Yes, Nevada. I'm sorry, I've never been to Alcon. Perhaps you confused me with someone else. Did y'all have a shared hallucination? Donna Troy and I were a couple of straights. Oh, they're all drinking orange soda. Nothing leaking us other than parents that like to dress up at night and fight crime. Not <laughs> Gar's face! She's awesome. What's next for us all? God, I hope it's somebody who's better at applying wigs, because Rose and Gar, wow. You know the best way to deal with grief? Avoiding it through beating the crap out of other people. Oh, here we go, the V shot. Yeah, see, the number doesn't work. We need one more person. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, no, no! Wait, how did Crypto get back? I'm confused. What did that happen? She's so cute. Okay, little kids with glasses steal my heart. I can't. No! Why? Seriously, why would you take... Yeah, you are all kinds of evil. You just took this person's mom, this girl's mama? Oh, okay. Okay, Blackfire, it's like that. We gonna fight, but she go cool though. We are family, really, y'all? Oh man. All right, guys, that was the season finale of Titans, which was called Nightwing. And, um, Wow, we just got everything just wrapped up in a bow, didn't we? Took care of Deathstroke and got everybody out of Cadmus. I've got mixed emotions about this particular episode. I feel like, I mean, overall it was good. It was overall good. I feel like we, <coughs> pardon me, we did deal with the storylines we've been building up for most of the season, but I don't know. I guess I, I talked about this a lot in the previous review, so I'm not going to go into it too much, but I just kind of feel like the pacing was probably my biggest critique of this season. The character development where Dick was concerned, we got baby steps more with Corey and somewhat with Rachel as well. Like that kind of stuff was done quite well. I did like how they incorporated the whole thing with how the Titans broke up in the first place and Jericho's part in it. But I just feel like this, the last four episodes before this were kind of all over the place and really didn't keep with enough pacing in my opinion to have us all smushed into one finale. Like the Cadmus thing should have been kind of massive, right? It should have been a kind of a huge thing for this multi-billion dollar company with tons of tech, like enough tech to create a hybrid out of two male DNA strands to create this Superboy. Like you got that, the resources and the brains behind that, like what they did to Gar and what they did to Connor and everything. Like my whole point is that it should have been a deeper and much bigger thing than Rachel basically being the conduit to fixing both of them. And I mean, it's fine. I have no problem with Rachel being this super powerful thing because she is a super powerful being. We know this, but it just kind of felt a bit like a plot convenient option that didn't necessarily need to be there. Like, I guess my point is, 
Cadmus could have been a really good kind of ongoing theme that kind of sat in the back burner of, you know, seasons to come. And I just feel like they kind of threw it all in, rushed it all in, even rushed Mercy and her character a bit. I mean, the actress did an absolutely amazing job with portraying this character that was very easy to hate. <laughs> but I just feel like there just could have been more there, I guess is my point. In a, in a show like this that has such rich character development, I really feel like they could have done a little bit more to bring out this storyline with Cadmus and what was done to Gar and Connor. And I would, I just think that there's so much potential there. It could have been so much more, I don't know, just like fulfilling, I guess, if we'd seen something where like Gar was put back into Titans and we saw him kind of slipping in and out and that's not really even like, you know what I mean? Like they could have put that together where like this could have happened earlier in the season where Mercy got Gar and then they did that they did and then they could have put Gar back into Titans. We could have seen piece by piece while he executed all these things that she had, you know, done to kind of program him. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying it had to be that way, but I just feel like that could have been such a much more fulfilling and tense and just meteor storyline where the Cadmus thing was, was involved. And again, I'm not saying that Cadmus is done here. I don't think we're done with seeing them or I don't know about Mercy. I mean, Mercy's in a whole lot of trouble, clearly. Lex was on the phone and I'm sure he wasn't that happy, but you get my point. Like, I just feel like that whole storyline, if they chose to bring it in, they really could have done it with a little bit more depth and meat than what we got. And it kind of ended up being, since we had Gar in there for what, two episodes, three episodes, and Connor, well, really, he was really in it for two episodes, let's be real, like two full real episodes of where Connor was actually there and doing anything. So it just kind of became like this extra plot device that was thrown in at the last minute, and I don't know that we really needed it. But again, I'm not going to judge too harshly yet because we do have a season three coming and potentially Cadmus being brought in and all the things that we saw are going to actually build into something more. I just feel like if we leave it at this, it's just going to feel like this was a very expensive detour that didn't necessarily, for me, pan out to be as satisfying as it could and should have been. But as far as everything else with the Deathstroke storyline, I feel like that was fair enough. My only caveat to that was that in the comics that I saw, like watching the J Young Justice and some of the movies I've watched, like my whole thought process around Deathstroke is that he's really hard to kill. Right? That's kind of the whole thing is that he's not someone that would necessarily die with one abdomen wound. To my understanding, pretty much the only way to really get rid of Deathstroke would have been like if that blade had gone through his brain or if you'd cut his whole head off. Like, so I just kind of feel like, okay, you built him up to be this person that took out Donna Troy, who is no joke, who beat down all the Titans, who's been just doing this for years, this formidable, scary enemy. And in the end, he was kind of taken down by Rose, who is not super strong. Yes, she's able to heal, at least to our knowledge, they've never shown her to be super strong, but but you get what I'm saying? Like, it just feels weird that that was what took Deathstroke down. If they did indeed took Deathstroke down and nobody even checked. We've got Rose, who's got super healing, and you give him one ab wound and y'all are just like, okay, well, he's dead, let's go. Wait, what? Like, that just kind of felt very, as I said, like I, I said this in the last review, I feel like the finale could be for it, feel rushed, I should say. And this was one of the, the areas where I feel like that rushed feeling came in. I was just like, I'm glad we don't have to deal with Deathstroke kind of looming anymore. I'm super glad that my poor baby Jericho got out of there, but it just felt very plot convenient and very quick. My whole thing is like kind of coming back to what I said about the whole Cadmus storyline is that we could have made Cadmus more of a back burning issue and then really given, I feel like the Deathstroke thing the finale it deserved, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like if they just backburnered the Cad Cadmus thing and just done something like what I suggested where they kind of mess with Gar and Connor and then left them to be these slow, dissolve, like these slow burning bombs to, to go off in, in the Titans later, that would have left more room for really building up the whole Jericho slash Deathstroke storyline and really having like that grand finale fight. Like I personally expected the Deathstroke confrontation to be something where like all the Titans were coming at this guy and he was holding them off real well for a while, especially considering that we have Corey whose powers are on pause at the moment. Of course, them being hamstrung by the fact that Jericho's in there and they don't want Jericho to die along with his dad. You know, like it would have been a really good 
setup and it could have been a really good epic fight and that's kind of what I wanted to see and then if he did eventually get taken down it would have been this thing where they kind of had to come together as Titans to bring this guy down and they finally get let Jericho be free and then either finish Deathstroke off or get him so messed up that he could be sent off to um, Iron Heights or something right instead I mean I'm gonna say it I feel like this fight scene was a little bit I don't say disappointing because choreographically it was great like it, it looked good but I just I expected more for the buildup that we've got we've had since the beginning of the season it kind of felt a little bit like the Trigon defeat like I just you build this up in my head to be this really big thing and then we don't really get the payoff that I would expect so yeah I just feel like they were trying to juggle a few too many things on their plates this season particularly with the pacing that we got there is no reason like 13 episodes is still a lot of time I mean hello Game of Thrones has been rocking that number and less I think they had 10 episodes the first couple seasons and they still got through a lot of content in those. I just feel like they could take a page out of the book of earlier seasons. We're not going to talk about the last season of Game of Thrones, but <laughs> out of earlier seasons on how like when you have an hour of television, when you've got 50 or 55 minutes of television uninterrupted, you need to use every minute wisely. Like 13 episodes is enough to tell a good story arc with multiple threads, but you have to make sure you're really utilizing that time well. And unfortunately, I don't think that they did that this season. That's kind of how I feel about the whole Deathstroke thing. As I said, I'm kind of glad it's over with though. I don't know that it's fully over because as I said before, if it's based on comic book version of Deathstroke, like I said, one knife wound to the abdomen will not be enough to kill him. But now that Jericho is no longer part of him, maybe Deathstroke won't need to, pardon me, focus so heavily on Team Titan anymore because it's over in a way, right? He, he knows Jericho's lost now. Jericho's never going to go back into that body willingly. And really, there, it just doesn't seem to make any more sense for him to continue to pursue this vendetta. I do hope in season three that we explore Jericho potentially. I don't know what happens, honestly. I don't know what to say about Jericho. I've said this a few times. I don't know about how I feel about him staying in Rose's body. If it's a co- What's the word? Like a co-pilot situation where it sounds like they're they're fine, like Rose is okay with him taking over sometimes and vice versa, then maybe it's fine. But I just think that's really weird. And I think that's going to be really weird for Rose's love life. Yeah, as we saw towards the end, what they're going to have to worry about next season is Blackfire. Blackfire is clearly not done messing with Corey. And I'm here for it because I feel like Corey's storyline, while it did make some progression, we kind of got dead stop after... The whole Fadai thing. So I am very, very ready for her storyline to keep going and us figuring out like what's gonna happen. Cause I know, I shouldn't say I know, when I watched a couple of the movies around the Titans, the storyline where Blackfire was actively pursuing Corey, like she literally followed her to Earth and sent bounty hunters and a bunch of things like it was not like this passive, oh, if you come back to Tamaran, you're in trouble thing. It was like, no, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to end this. And so when we saw in that episode where Fadai died and everything like that, where Blackfire was like, oh, like, I'll be waiting for you. Come get me. And then she blew up the ship. I was like, OK, but that seems really passive. Like you blow up, you, you, you can't kill any way for Corey to come back to Tamaran and you're just going to sit there and rule like that doesn't sound like the Blackfire that I learned about at least via the comics so this seems more like it her coming to earth to do i don't even know what like that's the question the fact that she overtook that poor mama like her two put what without her babies they got her two babies she probably a single mama too and you just leave her with two babies like that blackfire is cold man that is some cold stuff she could have infected like some single chick you know who you know, some somebody who ain't got two dependents relying on her. But, you know, we already know Blackfire's got some issues with family. She she feel a little entitled. I think she just kind of takes a pleasure now in seeing family suffer because of what she went through. But anyway, I am excited to see that she's not done messing with Corey. And I don't know if that's because she just wants to. I don't know, because I don't even understand what she's doing. Like, it's, it's like she can take over a body. And the fact that... Starfire had to kill Fadai in order to stop it. It looks like it's a one-way ticket. So this woman, she ain't getting her body back is my point. Like that's it for her. 
So, but it's not, it seems like Blackfire is still on Tamarind. So I'm, I'm just, I'm not sure how this whole projection thing that she's doing works. And I don't know what her, she's doing it in aid of. Like, is she just trying to check up on Corey to make sure that Corey isn't coming back to Tamarind? Or is she coming to just mess with Corey some more? That would make some sense to me and be very fun in season three. We saw in that episode, the same one that I keep referring to, that Blackfire's got some real issues, you know? She's got some real jealousy going on with Corey's concern, and that's what I get from Blackfire, is that she's killed her parents, she's killed her entire royal court. You'd think she'd be satisfied, right? She's got the crown. She's on Tamaran. No way for Corey to come home anytime soon. She could rule. She should be happy, right? That's what she wanted. Yet here she is, back on Earth, back trying to mind Corey's business, right? Now, yes, some of that could be an insurance policy that Corey doesn't ever actually get to come back to Tamaran, but I'm willing to bet it's because she doesn't feel satisfied. If that is the case, that'll be super fun to watch next season, and I'll definitely be down for that. And again, I'll just be down for more Corey and Corey having more development. I don't want to complain about it too much because it is still far more than Gar got. I'm not going to go into Gar again just because I've already ranted about it solidly for a lot of reviews now, but I really hope in the upcoming season that we see more of somebody reaching out to Gar a little bit. I mean, with Rachel now the Themyscira, which I'm still not sure what that's an aid of, but my guess is it's so that she can come back next season and suddenly know a bunch of martial arts and a bunch of other things. It also potentially leaves the opening for that Donna could return in some way. A lot of y'all predicted that somebody wasn't coming out of this finale. I did not think it would be one of the Titans, or if it was, I thought it would be like Hank or Dawn, to be honest. <laughs> But I'm sorry if I didn't react enough. I know some people might have been super sad about it. I just kind of feel like it just felt like a weird way to kill Donna. That whole scene felt weird to me. It just felt very plot convenient once again, because I was like, okay, you've got two people who have super speed, not just Donna. There is Connor, Connor who probably could have withstood the voltage, or at least between the two of them, they could have like taken that rod and like thrown it away or something or, you know, I just, I'm gonna leave it alone, but it just felt a little too plot convenient. That death didn't feel authentic to me. It just felt weird, like we just need to do something tragic now, like let's do this. I don't know. I, um, it would have been more like if one of Cadmus's agents had a stray bullet or if Mercy did like one last shot, that would have resonated better to me than the tower thing. But anyway, she may not be gone, so once I heard that Rachel's like, I'm gonna try to go there and see what I can do, I'm like, okay, maybe Donna's not actually gone. So we'll see what happens next season. But either way, it, it gives an excuse, not an excuse, but a way for Rachel to come back next season being stronger and potentially a better fighter. And I think actually being around the other Amazons who've dealt with supernatural powers for a while, they could probably also help her figure out ways to better handle her powers and channel them going forward. Because the reality is as much as Bruce, or not Bruce, I keep mixing Bruce and Dick up and it's so frustrating. I'm so sorry. If we're being real, Dick doesn't really have the time to dedicate to what Rachel needs as far as that type of attention, especially with a full house at Titan Tower at the moment. I think he's going to have to try to figure out what to do with Jason, which he wasn't in this episode and I'm fine with it. I know that in the comics, a lot of you have mentioned that he was always a bit of a rogue agent and that his ties to Titans have always been very loose. And so I think that that's fine. I think that they've definitely set it up in such a way that Jason will be able to kind of do his own thing, but still want to have some ties with the Titans to some degree. So we'll have to see how that goes in the next season. I've already said in the last review that Jason is kind of a meh character for me right now. I know for a lot of people who are fans of him in the comics that his character is really a big deal, but just for me, what we've seen so far, I'm just kind of ambivalent towards Jason. I don't hate him. I don't love him. I just kind of, I'm just ambivalent at the moment. So anyway, we'll see what happens next season, but they've left it wide open for him to potentially do his own thing going forward, which is fine. I think Hawk and Dove, they've been hinting at Hawk and Dove potentially going off and doing their own thing for a while. I don't know if they're actually going to do it, but we already saw that while Hank and Don are not going getting back together as a couple at the moment, they're probably going to continue doing their own crime fighting thing, which is fine. I mean, I said that in the last episode, both Hank and Don are addicted to violence. This is just something that they can continue to do. But I am glad that Donna said no to them getting back together as a couple. I do believe that the two of them have a lot to work out outside of the addiction that yeah, would be better served if they weren't still together feeding off of each other's issues. Yeah, as I said, for the, for the season overall, I do think it was good. Pacing is my biggest issue. I do feel like the pacing was not great and that the finale did feel rushed and didn't, it could have been so much better is my point. Like it wasn't bad, but it had the potential to be a lot better. So I'm really hoping that next season 
if they get the same amount of episodes that they really think about better ways to pace everything out and really give each character a little bit of time to grow and, and screen time to actually show us what's going on with them. Gar, 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 gar. I don't know how many times and ways I gotta say it. Please, 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 next season, my biggest wish is that Gar actually gets a full, real storyline. He really needs focus and actual, an actual structured storyline next season. I'm begging, please writers, please give Gar his just desserts next season. He's earned it, that actor has earned it. He's got a lot to wade through. Like this, this is what we're seeing, you know, Gar being a little bit on the, the teary side and kind of slightly sad. Like that's just the tip of the iceberg of what this poor kid needs to deal with. So I really hope next season, as I said before, if nothing else, that we finally, finally, finally get to delve into Gar's past and how all of this happened outside of what we saw in Doom Patrol and really helping him to figure out what he wants to do going forward, who he wants to be, because now that he's done all these horrible things as a tiger, I'm hoping that will push him into other forms potentially next season, but we're not gonna know that until then. So that's it guys. Thanks so much for watching this season of Titans with me. I am really looking forward to season three. And again, all my hopes and wishes will hopefully come true. What did you guys think of the overall season? How did you feel about the pacing? How did you feel about the finale? And how do you think things are gonna go with Blackfire. Like, I really wanna know what y'all think Blackfire is planning to do with this whole body takeover thing she's done once again. Please leave your comments below. You know, I love reading them and getting involved in that conversation with you. So if you guys watch any of my other reactions, then you will see me doing some more of those throughout the end of the year. But if not, this might be adieu until 2020. So I hope you guys have a safe, happy, wonderful holiday season and have a great new year. And we will see you in 2020. See ya.